From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hi everybody, this is Dave Vellante of the Cube, and we have some news for you. Pure Storage has acquired Portworks, the Kubernetes specialist, for $370 million in an all cash transaction. Charlie G. and Carlo is here. He's the CEO of Pure Storage, and he's joined by Merle Thiramale, who is the CEO of Portworks. Gentlemen, good to see you. Thanks for coming on. Thank, Thank you, you Dave. Much. Thanks for having us. So Charlie, uh, the, the transaction, all cash transaction, north of 300 million, your biggest transaction uh, ever, your biggest acquisition, uh, give, us, give us the hard news. Yeah, well, the, it, the hard news is uh, easy news for our customers. We're bringing together uh, two great companies. Uh, Pure, as you know, the, the leader in, in technology and uh, data storage and management. And we're bringing to get in uh, to our team, uh, the Portworks team that is the, has been the leader uh, in container orchestrated uh, storage systems. And uh, it really ma is going to match, uh, you know, ex the existing and and uh, legacy uh, hardware and application environment to the new environment of containers, and we couldn't be more excited. So, t so tell us, you know, what was the rationale, the sort of thesis behind the acquisition? What are you hoping to accomplish, Charlie? Yeah. You know, uh, containers is the way that uh, applications are going to be developed in the future, uh, with uh, with no doubt. And uh, containers utilize storage differently than traditional application environments, whether those are, are VMs or even bare metal application uh, environments. And uh, because of that, it's a very new way of, of handling data management. The other thing we saw was a philosophy within um, uh, Portworks, very similar to Pure, of building cloud everywhere and make it look the same, whether it's in a private data center or in the uh, public uh, cloud environment. And so by bringing these two things together, we create a very consistent environment for, uh, for customers, whether they're uh, utilizing and going with their existing application environment or with the new container environment for their new applications. So Merlin, let me go to you. First of all, congratulations. You know, this Thank isn't you. your, your, your first uh, nice exit. We, we've known each other for a long time. So, so that's yep. fantastic for you and the team. Uh, so, so bring us up to date on kind of where the company you know, started and, and where it's gone and, and why you feel like this is such a good fit and a good exit for Portworks. Well, let's start with the company. You know, we've been uh, uh, at this for uh, five and a half years, almost six now. And we started with the, the very premise that, that as containers were beginning to be deployed and apps started to kind of be seen everywhere, containerized, that data agility needed to match the app agility that people were getting from containers. And that was something that was missing. And so one of the things we did was uh, really kind of uh, take an entirely different approach to storage. We turned kind of storage on its head and, and designed it from the app down. And effectively, what we uh, did was leverage Kubernetes, which was being used really until then to orchestrate really just or the container part of the uh, of this, uh, system to start orchestrating data and storage as well. So northbound, you know, we containers are being orchestrated orchestrated by Kubernetes to manage the apps, and southbound Portworks now added the ability to manage data with Kubernetes. And what that's resulted in, Dave, is that you know, uh, in in the last several years, we've gained 160 customers, uh, household names, right? Comcast, T-Mobile, Lufthansa, GE. Roblox, uh, RBC, who have all sort of deployed us in production and, and really kind of built a leadership position in the ability to aid digital transformation uh, of you know, which customers are going through with containers. Hey guys, if, I wonder if you could bring up that, the chart. Uh, I want to just introduce some ETR data here. So, so this is one of our favorite views, XY view, the vertical axis is spending momentum or what we call net score higher the better, and the, vert and the horizontal axis is, is market share. And you can see, I've, I've outlined with that little pink area, container orchestration and container platforms. And you can see it's very elevated, right there with machine learning and AI, a little bit above cloud computing, right there with robotic process automation. This is the April survey of 1,200 uh, respondents. Uh, the July survey, you know, robotic process automation bumps up a little bit, which changes the shape. But I, I wanted to show this picture to, really explain to our audience the, you know, the popularity, I and mean, this is where people are investing. 
and, Ch and Charlie, you can see storage kind of, you know, right there in the, in the middle. And you, it seems to me you're now connecting the dots to containers, which are going to disperse everywhere. We often think of containers sometimes as this separate thing, but it's not. I mean, it's, right. it's embedded into the entire stack. I wonder if you could talk containers about Containers are just the, the next generation way of, of building applications, right? And one of the great things about uh, containers, it, when you build an app on containers, it becomes what's known as portable. You know, it can operate in the cloud, it can operate on your own uh, hardware inside your own data center. And of course, Pure is known for making data portable as well between both uh, private data centers uh, and uh, hyperscalers such as AWS and, uh, and Azure. So by bringing this together, making it possible not just for, as we talked about, container-based applications, but also for existing uh, uh, application environments, whether that is a VM or bare metal, you know, we create a very flexible, portable environment. I wonder if we could talk merely about, you know, just sort of the evolution of, I mean, VMs and then, and, and obviously containers. The, you know, the, the virtual machines, when we were spinning them up in the early days, storage was like the second class citizen. And then through a series of integrations and, you know, hard work, you had, you know, storage much more native. Uh, but every VM is, is, is kind of fat, right? It's sharing the same uh, or has its own operating system. My understanding is containers, they could share a single operating system. Uh, and, and so, but talk a little bit more, first of all, is that right? And, and where does storage fit in, in containers? I mean, we think of them, at least, at least in the early days, as ephemeral, uh, but you're solving a different problem of persistence. Maybe talk about that, that problem that you're solving. Sure, Dave. I think, you know, you characterize this as uh, the right way, right? There's kind of VMs, uh, that have dominated sort of in, in the world of infrastructure for, 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 for the last 10, 15 years now. But what, what is really happening here is a little bit more profound, right, really, is if you think about it, this is the transformation of a data center from being very, very machine-centric, which is sort of the look back view of the world, to being much more application-centered going forward. And, this is being accomplished not just by, you know, what Charlie talked about, which is applications being deployed in containers, but by the evolution of using Kubernetes now as the new control plane for the data center. So in, in the last couple of years, something amazing has happened, right? People have adopted containers and in doing so, they've realized they need to orchestrate these containers and lo and behold, they've kind of deployed Kubernetes. As they've done that, they've begun to recognize that Kubernetes now gives them a, an amazing capability. They can now let everything be application driven. So Kubernetes is now the new app defined control plane for the, for the data center, just like VMs and VMware was the, you know, the kind of compute centered machine defined data center of the past. So we're one of those modern day companies for the modern you know, digital transformation stack. And it doesn't just mean, it's just not just a products like Portworks, but other products in there, right? Whether it's a Rancher and OpenShift or, or uh, security solutions that are extensions of Kubernetes. So to your point, what we've done is we've taken Kubernetes and extended it to managing storage and data. And we're doing that in a way that allows it to be fully distributed, completely automated, and in fact, what happens is now the management of, of the app and the data go hand in hand at the same time. You don't have the separation of sort of responsibilities. So the person who is really our buyer and buying set is a very different buyer than traditional storage. And you know, you know traditional storage, I've, I've talked to you about that part of the business a long time, many times in the, in the past, our buyers, are actually DevOps buyers. So we land in DevOps and we expand in IT ops. Our budgets are coming from uh, a digital transformation budget like move to cloud or, or even just kind of business transformation. And our users are really not the classic storage user, but really the, the person who's driving Kubernetes, the person who's making automation decisions, cloud architects, automation architects. They can now operate storage without having to know storage through products like Portworx that extend Kubernetes uh, in, in, and allow it to be all application driven. Oh, it's so it's much more, happen. So, so it's much more than just bringing, I say just, much more than bringing state uh, to what was originally a stateless environment, it's bringing more data management. 
Um, Correct. So, so Charlie, connect the dots for us in terms of where Pure fits in that in that value chain. Well, as you know, I mean, we've developed a, a large number of products and capabilities that uh, go well beyond storage into data management. So whether it's snapshotting or replication or data motion, you know, into, uh, you know, from, uh, from on-prem into the cloud. And as we've been doing that, we've been building up a control plane to do this with, you know, traditional uh, block and file storage. Now, this is extending that set of same uh, set of capabilities uh, to the container side. Uh, you know, whether it'll be block, because contain, there are a lot of uh, container systems that are looking at block, but even into the object uh, space overall. So think of this as the integration of data manage, of a data management control plane for both existing and new apps. And, and that data control plane existing not just in one location, such as uh, the, the, the private data center or the private cloud, but also into the public uh, cloud as well, so that a company can orchestrate their both their uh, their container based apps, but also the data that goes along with them and the data that goes to their traditional apps with one orchestration tool. So you, know, you mentioned you know I think when you said motion, I think of vMotion uh, and and if I want to move a workload from one VM to another, I can preserve its state. Is that kind of where you're headed with? With containers, well, that, you know, sort of in, motion for containers. You're, you're thinking of it very much in a push, you know, IT push sense, rather than just the application calling for data access and being given given it through a set of APIs. So again, very much more dynamic environment rather than rather than it be a human in, uh, instigated. You know, think of it being as as a policy and and pro and programmer in, uh, initiated set of activities. Uh, so I'm glad you brought that up because we think yeah. about we think about you know it, we also often think in monolithic terms, and and containers are not right. It's really like right. you said, thinking app, application terms. Even though they run inside of VMs, it sort of breaks. Well, they that. can, but they don't have to, right? Uh, they can right. run on bare metal, uh, but of course, you know, uh, with the uh, with VMware, they they've designed it to be able to run inside of VMs as well. If that's what customers are most comfortable with. Sure. Okay, Merle, you were going to add some color to that. Yeah, I think I think you know what 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 Charlie is describing is really kind of a new paradigm. That's a self-service paradigm, where application owners and application drivers, people who are creating apps, de uh, deploying apps, now can can self-service themselves through a Kubernetes-based interface, and and it's all automated, right? So in in a in a in a funny way, one way to think about this is a somebody who who's you know deploying apps. They are doing that with the help of Kubernetes. Their hands never leave the Kubernetes wheel, and now all of a sudden, they're deploying, you know, data uh, and storage, and doing all of that without an intimate knowledge of the storage infrastructure. So that kind of idea of automation driving and it's a, and it's app-driven self-service model really enables that agility for data in addition to the agility for uh, for the app layer, and and I think Dave, the key thing here is, you know, why why it, why has that container bubble floated to the top of of your of your of the graph that you just showed? It's because I think modern day enterprises are doing two things that are imperative for their success. Right, one of them is the fast enterprises are going to eat the slow, so they need to move fast, and the way for that fast to be translated from an app agility to the agility throughout the whole stack is enabled by this. The other thing that they are doing is data is the new oil and, and folks really need to be able to leverage their data, whether it's their own data, external data, but bring it all together in real time, mine it, and they can't do that without automating the heck out of it, right? And that's what Kubernetes enables also. So the combination of data agility and being able to kind of create that ability to mine in real time the data to an app-oriented interface is, is completely revolutionary if you think about it. And, and in my view, going forward, what you're going to start seeing is that Kubernetes is going to start revolutionizing not just the app world, but the world of infrastructure. The world of infrastructure is going to change significantly with the advent of Kubernetes being used to manage infrastructure. Yeah, we often say in theCUBE that data is the new development kit, 
And, and you're talking about, you know, in, infrastructure as code is the perfect instantiation here. So Charlie, I, I, I wonder, are developers sort of a new distribution channel for you? Do you see that evolving? Yeah, you know, we did a lot of studying uh, before bringing the two companies together and about 40% uh, of the buyers of, uh, uh, of uh, this uh, environment of, of Portworx are customers that we do talk to regularly in the IT group and about 60% in the DevOps uh, environment. So, you know, one of the beautiful things about this is we have a good head start with the people we're selling to today, uh, but also it opens up a whole new uh, buying area for us uh, with DevOps and one that we plan on uh, investing in as we go forward. So Charlie, I would imagine this is a pretty fast close, right? I mean, what's the, the, the time Yeah, these are two California expect? companies and, and luckily we, we, we scoot under the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, legal radar of, of HSR, so we think we'll be able to close this within 30 days. Great, and, and how, how will you organize it? You going to sort of, where is it's it? Gonna be, it's going to be a, uh, a new business unit uh, reporting directly to me. Uh, as especially as we go through the you know the early days of uh, uh, of integrating, but really we want to learn from the way that Portworks has built a successful business. Make sure that we combine the best of both organizations together uh, and uh, really understand uh, you know how uh, to best uh, tie together our go to markets uh, in the uh, you know with uh, the combination of, of legacy and container. And so, so Merle, you're going to hang out for a while. Absolutely. I, you know, um, I, was, I was talking to my team earlier and I said, look, the journey of business success is like a thousand steps. And the part of a startup is only the first 250 steps. Now, I'll tell you, I think we've kind of run up those first 250 steps pretty fast, but we're going to sprint through the next 750 steps with, with uh, you know, in the company of, of, of Pure, because look, Pure is, has always been well known as a disruptor in the business uh, for a long time, and we are a relatively new dis uh, disruptor in the Kubernetes space. I think this is this this level of our joint ability to disrupt that market end to end is, is going to be just just uh, astound ast astonishing. And I, I'm just really looking forward to kind of taking this to a greater level of accelerating our our business. Well, Charlie, I mean, you see in the data. I mean, if you pick an analyst firm. The vast majority of new applications are being you know, developed in using Kubernetes and containers, but uh, give us the last word, uh, give us the, the summary from you in your final thoughts. You know, I think, that, you know, for uh, both Pure and Portwork customers, what they're going to see is just a, a great marriage of two great companies. I think it's a marriage of two great technologies, and they're going to see the ability to be able to orchestrate all of their data across, you know, their existing as well as their new application environments, and across both, their development of their private cloud and the public cloud environment. So this is a, you know, a, a great addition to uh, uh, the advancement that customers are seeing through orchestration. Orchestration, both of their application environment, but just as importantly, the orchestration of their uh, data storage and management. Excellent. Well, gentlemen, thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate you coming on theCUBE. Thank you, thank David. You. Always good to see you. Pleasure. All right. And best of luck to you both. And thank you for watching everybody. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE and we'll see you next time.